Season's greetings, St. Francis. News Team 2 is back for you. I'm Jack Moretti. And I'm Matt Pantano. Today is Wednesday, November 28th, Letter A Day. Please turn off and put away your cell phones and rise for the morning prayer and pledge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. St. Francis, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, Jack, when I went Black Friday shopping, I just couldn't find the right thing to buy. Well, Matthew, you're in luck. And you know why? Why? Because the 2013 Crusader yearbook is still on sale. Mm -hmm. But you better hurry, because it's only on sale for 13 more days. And where can I find this spectacular gift? Why, in the campus store, of course. With a price of $85, cash or check, it makes the perfect gift. Well, it's that time of year again, where we all get caught up in the busy holiday season, but we somehow forget about what really matters. That's right. We forget about those who are less fortunate than us. Campus Ministry is hosting its annual clo Christmas clothing drive from December 10th to the 14th. Bring in anything that might put a smile on someone's face. Please donate. And if you are a person that needs to get in the holiday spirit, then we know just the thing for you. The annual St. Francis Christmas concert is coming up on December 12th at 7 p.m. in the Aug. It's a truly magnificent night, filled with great music, cheer, and you get to see Mr. DeVries in a tuxedo. That's cool. Yeah. But if that still doesn't get you into the spirit, this must. Greccio Lessons and Carols are coming up December 16th at 4 p.m. in the chapel. All are welcome. The annual Mother-Son Breakfast will be December 2nd at 9.30 a.m. in the chapel. Remember to buy tickets and don't forget your mom at home. French Club will meet tomorrow in room 306. Then you'll proceed down to the SDR to make French Canadian poutine. Mm. <laughs> make sure to come hungry. Raiders Against Cancer will meet tomorrow at 215 in room 3D. New members are welcome. And Raiders Against Cancer Apparel is now on sale from Campus Store. Wow, t-shirts are $12 and go towards a great cause. Permission slips are now available in room 2A for the March for Life in Washington, D.C. See Mr. Reichenberg for details. And if anyone needs service hours, there's a service opportunity now for a chance to give some of your time at Roswell Park Cancer Institute. Please see Mr. Reichenberg for information. Well, that's it for today, St. Francis. I'm Jack Moret. And I'm Matt Pantano. Stay tuned. Good morning, St. Francis. I'm John Osborne. And I'm Xavier Stripbatter. This is Athol Springs News Network. Today's headlines come to us from the windy city of Chicago, where a woman has just broken the record for the most parking tickets ever. The woman racked up 678 parking tickets and over $105,000 in fines. That's quite a lot of money, but there's more to the story. The car was purchased by her ex-boyfriend who deeded the vehicle in her name. He then abandoned the car in a high security lot at the airport. The woman did not have the keys to the car and couldn't even get into the lot to move it. She asked the police for help, but they legally couldn't move the car because of regulations in place. She finally managed to get the deed transferred to her ex, but the city is still charging her the large sum. That's why this is an all-guy school. In other news, customers of the Long Island Power Authority in New York and on the Jersey Shore are outraged. And the, the power company is charging customers for a full month of power, even though most of them were without power for days or weeks due to the destruction caused by Hurricane Sandy. The company used the power meeting readings from the same month last year to build customers, ignoring actual figures from the month of the storm. Complaints are flying in from all corners because of the bills that do not account for the days without power. It's really quite ridiculous. 
That's all we have for today, folks. I'm John Osborne. And I'm Xavier Strip Matter. And this is the Athol Springs News Network. Coming to you from Studio 313 in Friars Hall, this is Jake and Jay in the Morning with Jay Watkins and Jay Wilkie. They are bringing St. Francis Sports to you right now. Good morning, St. Francis. I'm Jake Watkins here with Jay Wilkie, and this morning we are going to wrap up the fall season and give you a brief preview of what the winter will hold. Cross Country had a very successful season, and next year it looks like they will continue to run well. Although they are losing senior talent in Mike Taylor, Ben Brady, and Angelo Hurley, just to name a few, juniors are expected to step up big in their absence. Next year, listen as you'll most certainly hear us mention Tim Bartnick and Tanner Kendall, who are likely to contribute to another season of success. Volleyball did not have the season that they dreamed of this year, unable to beat Canisius in the semifinals of the playoffs. However, they played very well in tournaments this year, and when they won a match, they dominated. I still remember their incredible win against O'Hara that I was lucky enough to witness. Things look good for the team next year as they only lose a couple senior starters. That's right. I'm sure Coach Lanigan will be looking for juniors Dave Kennedy, Nick Novak, and John Moretti to step up even more so than they did this past year. If you watched our show this fall at least once, you will be able to suspect that next year the golf team will be missing Corey Collin, who had an outstanding season. Yes, he will be missed, but this will leave room for some future leaders to step up. Golf will specifically be helped out by two underclassmen who both earned medalist honors this past season. Watch out for John D'Antonio and David Haynes in season to come. Varsity football got off to a rather shaky start this season going 0-7, but after a hard-fought battle against St. Ignatius, they went undefeated into the playoffs until they lost to Canisius at the Ralph. As always, we will miss our seniors and we give a special salute to Captains John Sordry, Brian Mellis, Jordan Zakrzemski, and Jared Dalagala who led their team through a tough season. Next year, be sure to root on the Raiders as juniors Jake Dolagala, Mike Miller, and Elliot Bucheri are sure to be contributing factors to next year's season. Varsity Soccer had an incredible season this past year, going 9-7-3 in the regular season. They would advance to the playoffs and flew by Nichols, winning 2-0. However, they were unable to bring home the championship, losing 1-0 in overtime to Canisius. The second place team was a senior heavy team, and coaches Malinsky and Kritachi will surely miss Jason Jablonski, Drew Bassini, Tyler Eister, Pat Schaefer, Brendan Macy, and all the other seniors who contributed this past season. Aaron Hayes and Sam Eggleston played with the experience and maturity of seniors this past year, and will surely bring it next year when they'll hope to avenge this old season. Now, that's it for fall sports, but before we go, we're just going to give you a quick look into the winter season. The winter sports teams will officially kick off their seasons on the following days. Wrestling will have their first match on December 4th against Gow. Prep hockey will go down to Chicago for their second tournament of the year this weekend. Fed will play Sweet Home out at the Northtown Center on Friday. Bowling will continue their season next Tuesday when they take on Park at Thruway Lanes. Mercy Basketball will take on West Seneca East in West Seneca on Friday. Swimming will have their first meet this Friday out in Springville. And lastly, Indoor Track will have their first meet on December 8th. Be sure to root on your Raiders at one of these events. And for more information on the winter schedule, just visit the school website. And just before we send it back to Matt and Jack, I believe we have one more order of business, Jay. That we do, Jake. Between next week and today, 
Go on the WSTF TV Red Raider Media Facebook page and vote for the Fall Athlete of the Year. Each team will be represented and you will only get one vote, so choose wisely. At the end of the year, there will be a vote for the Athlete of the Year, containing the winners of the Fall, Winter, and Spring season votes. That's all we have for sports. I'm Jake Watkins. And I'm Jay Wilkie. Back, Back to you guys. <laughs> I love that. And don't forget, News Team 2 cares about you. This has been a WSTF-TV production.